This game is rated M and is intended for mature audiences. Back, 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 back to a certain place, to a certain place. Oh, this is a different certain place, though. The air was still a little cold, but the sky that day was remarkably beautiful. Putting down my brush, I stretched out and muttered a few words to no one in particular. Recently, I'd been getting so absorbed in my art that it was easy to forget the time. There'd been a few incidents where I kept my car waiting long enough to cause some anxiety, so I started making a conscious effort to check my watch frequently. I examined my sketchbook. Instead of the sky that I'd been devoted to for so long, today I had pan painted the rooftop flower bed. After months of obsessively sketching the clouds, the change had taken me by surprise. For a while, I just gazed down at that image, various emotions running through me. I hurriedly gathered up my painting materials and pushed them into my bag. As it turned out, I was a little slow coming home after all. My life changed rapidly after my father's apology. The dinners together that had once been so painful were now something I looked forward to. I talked to him about many things. My art, formerly sketches of the sky and black pencil, had become increasingly colorful work executed with paintbrushes. I still I don't know what to, how to feel about that, because I feel like he's playing her. Even my life at school was shifting over ever so slightly for the better. Kanako? Who is this? She has a... She has a name! Maybe she'll be important. A girl who stood out even among the young ladies in our class, uh, Aida Kanako, began to approach me on a regular basis. The coffee. I don't care if I don't have antivirus protection, okay? We'd struck up a conversation about our work in art class one day, and had been talking like this pretty frequently ever since. She wasn't quite a friend yet, but up until then I'd almost never had actual conversations in school with anyone but the teachers. By my standards, it was an enormous step forward. Alright, Kanako seems like a nice character. A perfectly normal, unremarkable little scene. But in comparison to the emptiness of my life before then, those moments made every day feel astonishingly fresh and new. They, they just, they couldn't fit that extra Y on that line. Hey, hey, hey! <laughs> it's his dad! Dad was still an incredibly busy man. Nonetheless, he'd always come home at least a few times every week to have dinner with me. Does he ever change his suit, or does he just have identical suits? Probably the second one. I used to only see his face during the meal itself, but recently I'd started greeting him at the door with a natural smile on my face. This is kind of sweet. Oh, I Previously, my father had talked and talked, while I offered only brief responses, but the situation was largely reversed. I told Dad about everything, every trivial little thing in my life. No matter what the topic, he never failed to hear me out with a smile. That made me happy. Oh, that's so nice! いそがしくてそういうことをしてあげられなかったからな。それとも何か別のことがいいか？私遊園地がいいな。ああ。He's like, oh. He's like, I hate roller coasters. They make me barf. Can we go somewhere else? He looks so disappointed that we said an amusement park. <laughs> my father looked mystified. Still, I stuck to my guns. When I was very small and very lonely, the idea of a family visit to an amusement park had enchanted me. I was well past the age to be begging for a trip like that, but the secret yearning had never really gone away. What the heck kind of power is this? 
This is like when like Miley Cyrus rented out Disney, like the Magic Kingdom, for like her. Was it her 18th or 16th birthday? I don't even remember. He's like, do we even get the Express Pass Plus? I don't want to wait in lines. Waiting in lines is for peons. You know, if you can be happy with just a little money, then that's then you're going to be a pretty happy person. See, this is sweet. Unless he's got alternate motives for this, but if he, if on the assumption that he is being legit here, this is a really sweet moment. Dad spoke those words with a smile. It was the first time I'd asked him to get, I'd asked him for anything. Even as my days became happier, I'd been careful not to say anything greedy, anything about the things I wanted. I suppose I couldn't quite believe that tranquil life was real. If I asked too much of the dream, I was afraid it might just fall apart underneath me. Ever since that day, the size of my diary entries had increased exponentially. Where I used to write, nothing happened, again and again, ripping off the bottom of the page for scrap paper, now I was running out of space before I could cover everything. And in the center of my room, a canvas stood on an easel, surrounded by a colorful array of art supplies, all things I'd purchased and used frequently. I don't know, Yumiko, the flashback's not over yet, and you still haven't been sent to the Insane Asylum. I mean, Mahama Academy. So, I can only imagine something's gonna happen. Will something happen again? Yes! Will it fall apart in the blink of an eye? Quite probably. Everything was so peaceful that at times it made me feel uneasy. Come to think of it, those few days before my mother was scheduled to leave the hospital had felt very much the same. I hope this lasts forever. I'm quite sure I scribbled those words at the end of my diary entry. It was the one small wish I would allow myself. We're going back to a certain place. Ba -doo 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 -doo. The rainy season had come and gone. Summer was fast approaching. It was a day like any other. Final Fantasy Tactics Advance. Reading on the internet that the weather would be taking a turn for the worse in the afternoon, I called off my usual rooftop painting session and went home a little early. <laughs> They said it would be raining in the evening, but for the moment it was a pleasant afternoon, well suited to a bit of light exercise. Therefore, I got out of the car halfway and walked the remaining kilometer or so home. There wasn't any real reason for that. It was just a whim. Why are they playing the intense music now? What could have happened? <laughs> Everyone's dead. What? Donkey Kong killed them. No! <laughs> when I opened the front door and slipped inside, I found the entrance hall empty of the servants who were usually there to greet me. Donkey Kong killed the servants? How dare he? It was pr probably because I'd returned so suddenly. Even when I closed the door behind me, the hallway remained silent. Not that it really bothered me either way. I began to move towards the stairs. Yumiko, don't you hear the soundtrack? <laughs> Uh-oh. But a voice from deeper in the hallway stopped me in my tracks. If that woman hadn't happened to speak my name at that very moment, without a doubt, I would have shrugged, gone up the stairs to my room, and stayed completely oblivious. I slowly inched my way down to the passage, careful not to make a sound, and stopped just before a corner. Uh, don't worry about it, Proxima. Uh, Yumiko returned home, and intense music is playing, and the servants are talking about her, and we're about to figure out about what. From the other side, I could hear the free employees who usually met me at the door talking about something. Uh oh. They were speaking quietly, but I could make out their conversation clearly enough. I shouldn't be listening to this. My throbbing heart was making that very clear. I Was he faking it? I thought her dad was faking something. But my feet wouldn't budge, and my ears were intent on capturing every word of their discussion. But, 
子供の中で一番成績のいい操りやすそうなあの子を引っ張ってくるとか分かりやすいわよね What the frig? How many kids does this guy have? あの愛人息子の亡くなった当日に出てったみたいよ。あ、oh, ち、what the heck? あ、おでしょ。場所なくしちゃうわよね。ちし。わお。す、す、す、すかんばい。my body had begun to tremble。it was a part of the story I'd almost pushed out of my mind by now。that mistress and the boy she'd supposedly given birth to。I'd always thought it strange. Why did, had Dad called for me when he did? Why suddenly approach a daughter you'd tossed aside once before? What the F? I thought that attention was his way of honing. <coughs> thought that attention was his way of atoning for my mother's suffering. そういうふりしなきゃあの子に取り入れないから必死なのよ。フィッシュの洗脳プログラムよね、あれ。最初はぎこちなく接するふりして、その後確信をついて打ち解ける。専門家まで呼んで策を練ったそうね。Dude, this guy is the worst. No, he's still not the worst, but. Again, if you want to be the worst in this game. That's an exceedingly high bar. Like, you're gonna need a, a jetpack to get over that bar. <laughs> I thought that was his attempt at finally becoming a father to me. No, I simply convinced myself that it had to be that way. Deep down, I knew all alone that it couldn't possibly have been true. ドーグとして利用価値が出た瞬間にこれだものすごい世界よねでまたどっかで男の子が生まれた瞬間一気にお払い箱になるとわあそっかその手がまだあったか見てみたいわよねその表現する瞬間ジーズロイズいい加減に
He's, he must be one very patient person. <laughs> the time came for me to wake up. Acting on pure reflexive habit, I stood on unsteady feet and made my preparations. Pathetically enough, there was still a part of me holding on to hope. The house was no longer a refuge, but I'd begun to make a small place for myself at school. I could just make more friends. Find people to talk to. Maybe that would be enough. Maybe that would be something. I caught a glimpse of the face I was looking for from the hallway. Ida-san might be willing. If I kept talking to her, little by little, she might become my friend. Ida-san seemed to be talking to somebody. I peered in through the window. She was sitting at the very center of a group of girls. I'd just have to talk to her later when she was alone. Are you gossiping about me? The child of a mistress. Those were the same hateful words they'd printed in the magazine that changed everything. Kanako, are you trying to be the worst? Oh, yeah, you are you are contending to be the worst person in the VN. Well, sorry, you're not. But you're you're a you're a, a dipwad too. For some reason, I thought of a fruit hanging from a tree. Hey, that's like the title of the game. At first it ripens and swells on the end of its branch, beautiful and tempting. But in time its coloration grows impure and unattractive. Its point of connection to the tree begins to creak from the strain. One thread of fiber snaps, then another. The thin line holding it to life and nourishment grows thinner and thinner. And finally, this moment. I heard something fall. I entered the classroom. The girls, who had been snickering about me until a moment before, innocently looked away and moved on to another topic of conversation. A few moments after dropping my bag by my desk, I slowly began to walk in their direction. I felt every movement of my feet with a brilliant, eerie clarity. This might be what it's like to take the last few steps toward the summit of a high mountain. A climber has the thrill of achieving something, but in the determination, the clear-minded acceptance of fate, there might be something similar. Or so I thought, a spectator to my own actions. <laughs> Ida Kanako turned to face me with her usual placid smile. I had already decided what would happen next. Familiar feelings swelled inside me, the same as when I'd cut my hair, my diary, my canvas. Uh-oh. Ida Kanako's hand reached out to me. To my eyes, it looked like the grasping claw of a corpse pulling me down into hell. I'd understood all along. I'd simply kept myself from noticing. There was never any place of refuge here. I'd forced myself to believe in lies because I couldn't keep going without them. But I'd finally found a new way to live. Uh, did you just kill her? Or, uh... Oh, so this is the moment. I watched serenely as the blood spurted out. Okay, well, she's not dead, but... For a moment, she couldn't even process what had happened. For just a moment, she stared down blankly at her hand. At her palm, dyed in red. <coughs> Ida Kaneko collapsed in slow motion. Desks clattered all around. The others backed away as if distancing themselves from a live bomb. Ooh. Uh-oh. I think this is the moment that Yumiko, Yumiko finally snaps and becomes Murder Girl. That's right. I should have cut it all apart. I should have just cut off my brain and cut my way to freedom. I was grinding my teeth as hard as I could. There were tears streaming down from my face. But all things considered, I didn't feel particularly sad. Much the opposite. Since the blade had finally severed me from the lies, I was filled with a strange sense of relief. It felt as though a wide, shining road forward had been revealed to me. So, 
I shouldn't have hoped for a happy ending in the first place. Everything was scripted from the very start. And the actress had passively accepted her role, dreaming of a heartwarming conclusion in the black comedy that had been written for her. Ooh! Yep, this is the moment she snaps. At some point, I'd begun to laugh. The tears were still rolling down my cheeks, but there was no sadness in me anymore. I'd left most of that behind on the day my mother broke, and the rest on the day my father betrayed me. I depleted my stock of sorrow. <laughs> Just how much of a clown do I need to be? Just how pathetic do I need to become? What do I need to do to satisfy my cowering audience, to please the god who wrote this play? Their eyes watched me from what felt like an enormous distance, pushing me lower and lower into the dirt. <laughs> I brandished the open box cutter in my right hand toward the back of the classroom. Incoherent little shrieks from my classmates were the only response. A few girls had already broken down in tears. I laughed in their place, even when the teachers who came running pinned me down, even when they carried me out of the classroom like some sort of terrorist. Wouldn't it be odder to not laugh at something so utterly ridiculous? When they took me away, I noticed my desk standing isolated in the chaos, and felt a twinge of pity at leaving it behind. Until the very end, I could never see the person who supposedly sat there. My father acted swiftly once he was notified. A settlement was reached with the Ida family. The incident was erased without so much as a disciplinary hearing. <laughs> They're like, your daughter just cut our daughter's hand. He's like, yeah, but I have money. They're like, oh, uh, no, that didn't happen. <laughs> At first, my father tried to coax me out of my locked room with gentle words, but I refused to acknowledge his existence. After more than a month of that siege, I was half forced out, loaded unceremoniously into a car, and brought to a town where the air smelled of salt water. Hey! It's the school! We're about uh, back at present time. I understood what sort of a place it was the moment I saw the high wall surrounding it. It was a housing facility. A pleasant little cage where I could be safely stowed away without the risk of causing further trouble. A woman who introduced herself as the principal introduced me to the school with a slightly fearful expression on her face. She's like, this is the girl that murdered someone, right? No, I just cut her hand. She brought me to an empty dormitory and told me it would be my new home. When I checked the bank book I'd been handed on the way over, I found a rather excessive amount of pocket money in my account. From the day I began to wear an exceptionally flashy school uniform and commute to Mahama Academy, I haven't been face to face with my father even once. And now, I believe we are back in the present time. Yes, indeed! I'll continue for a little bit more just to, because it'll probably conclude the scene of them under the bridge, but then I'm going to stop. A personality starts off as something like a cube. Um, sure. When we're young, we clumsily bump our corners against other people in the form of childish conflicts. Eventually, our sharp edges are worn away to leave something more like a sphere. That's more or less what people are describing when they say someone's softened. Moderate collisions with others help us mature, but when those first impacts are too strong, they can have a different effect. Instead of losing our corners little by little, we splinter in strange, harsh ways, warping into crooked shapes. Once crooked, it's hard to become a sphere. Even as the people that round them mellow, their sharpness only grows harsher, and everyone who approaches ends up getting hurt. Yes, I get it. You have these poetic monologues, Yuji. You're still a scumbag. But even the most warped human beings started off the same shape as everyone else. Sometimes they look back on the past and grieve. Sometimes they wonder if it's not too late to reshape themselves. And because they know that's an empty dream, they grieve once again. Sakaki Yumiko is one of many such sad, distorted objects. The rain, which I'd taken for a passing shower, continued to lull after the thunder passed away. By the time we leave our cover in the lingering drizzle, the sun's already set. I told you, it's like 3 a.m. That story was so freaking long. That story was longer than the flashbacks in the Iver of the other two routes. I just want to point out. In a change from the usual routine, I hurry down the road home with an arm wrapped around Sakaki, who stumbles along unsteadily at my side. <laughs> Unfortunately. The rain's very weak by now, but the constant dampness has left her body noticeably chilled. And at the moment, her emotional state is a bit of, uh, a bit of concern as well. 
I lean closely over Sakaki as we walk, sheltering her from the rain as best I can. The relatively brief journey back to the dorm feels awfully alone right now. <laughs> that flashback was so long we haven't seen you! Amine, I don't want to talk to you. <laughs> no, we just had some tea and crumpets and talked. Amine yelps in surprise the instant she lays eyes on us. Was it that much of a shock to see me holding Sakaki by the shoulder? Well, considering the girl's normal personality, I suppose it's only reasonable to jump straight to assuming something's physically wrong with her. We got caught in that downpour, that's all. We sheltered from the rain for a while. Her physical condition aside, Sakaki seems badly drained in spirit. That uncharacteristic weakness from before is still plainly evident in her tone of voice. Appreciate it. I don't. I'm making a note. Once I'm old and gray, I'm going to write Amane wish I can have her child in my memoirs. <laughs> nope, can't do it. As soon as I got Sakaki to her room, she collapsed into her bed. Normally, she would have ejected me to change out of her wet clothes, but she's currently lacking the energy and willpower to bother. Yeah. The hot orange and honey drink Amine provided seemed to calm Sakaki down. It didn't take long at all for her to nod off. I think she's got a slight fever as well. We were out in the rain and all. That's just a myth. Lightly holding her hand to Sakaki's forehead, Amine nods in agreement. Sakaki doesn't seem to be in any real discomfort, but I can tell that she's breathing a little roughly. In any case, thanks for the help, Amine. I'm going to keep an eye on her for a little longer, but you can head back to your room. Amine's response seems oddly hesitant. What's wrong? Yes. Oh, of course not. Jesus would not be very happy if we did that. The hell? <laughs> Amine, what the hell? <clears throat> nope, not reading that. My face falls into my palm. Yeah, that's your usual reaction when Amine opens her mouth. For some reason, I find myself recalling a gag brain graph website Sachi showed me once. Just by entering someone's name, you'd get a brain-shaped pie chart breaking down the composition of their thoughts. I didn't think to try Amine at the time, but I think hers would be divided in half, right down the middle. One side would be folksy grandma wisdom. The other, as should probably go without saying, would be branded with the word sex. You think I'm going to start making babies like a rabbit the moment someone leaves me in a cage of a female? Does this scenario play out frequently inside that filthy mind of yours? No, Amine, some of us actually have self-control. It's still not entirely clear to me what Amine's so worried about, but I find it extremely unpleasant to have such aspersions cast on my character. Hmm, well, it's not a bad idea, come to think of it. What? I've heard that a slight fever can actually make for a more enjoyable experience in summer. What the bleep are you talking about? Alright then, might as well put that to the test. It's not like you can catch a fever intentionally, and I'll admit I'm curious. I'm sure Sakaki will understand a little- Nope. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Nope, 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 this is bad. Nope, 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 this is bad. <laughs> Even Amine thinks we're going too far. Amine stares back at me with the blank eyes of a broken electric toy. Smiling brightly, I give her a friendly thumbs up. Oh, uh, a friendly thumb on the... What? What are you even talking about? It was a joke. It was also an exceptionally stupid one. Amine's karate chop lands a critical hit smack in the middle of my weary head. From outside, an owl hoots in mournful commiseration. <laughs> I said I understand, didn't I? Come on, get lost already. 
How about you get lost too, Yuji? Amine backed slowly out of the room, staring at me reproachfully all the way. I was only teasing her a little in retaliation for slandering me, but it seems I've ended up deepening her unfounded suspicions. Probably best to consider the possibility she might try some half-assed wiretapping outside the door. Shaking my head, I returned to Sakaki's side. Her breath's coming regularly, a little more quietly than before. She doesn't seem to have noticed the commotion in the slightest. Well, that's definitely for the best. Borrowing the chair from Sakaki's desk, I ease myself down and look, at over, look her over at closer range. Come to think of it, this is the first time I've seen her sleeping. The girl really does have a pretty face. She's constantly forcing it into a scowl, so it's easy not to notice at times, but Sakaki Yumiko is definitely what you'd call a beauty. Right now, that face is relaxed, her eyes shut, and her cheeks are slightly flushed. Sakaki looks very calm and peaceful at the moment, but much of her life has been an emotional roller coaster of loneliness, hope, and anger. Now that I know the whole story, her usual prickly attitude is all too understandable. Rest easy, alright? I'll protect you. I lightly reach down and put my hand on her forehead, currently covered in a damp towel. The moisture against my palm is slightly warm from the heat of her fever. Cool! Okay, well that is where we ultimately are going to have to, uh, Not quick save, I want a full-on, real save. Well, that was a very long stream, but that was a really long flashback. It was good! I, I like the story. It definitely was an engrossing read, but um, I, gotta, I gotta stop now. My voice is going a little bit. And also, I gotta do grocery shopping and eat dinner before Mario Kart tonight, so... It's gonna be fun. Thank you all for joining in. I hope this was an enjoyable stream for you all. We'll be continuing Hollow Knight streams on Monday again, so that'll be a lot of fun as well. Thank you all very much. I hope you guys have a fantastic rest of your day, and God bless.